Welcome to Lesson 5, Characters in Fables. Today we're going to be talking about positive characters and how they can display good characteristics when we are reading a fable, which will then teach us a good lesson. So if we recall from Lesson 4, there are always two types of characters in a story. You can have a good guy or a bad guy. And some characters are going to display positive character traits. In many fables, one of the character displays a very positive character trait, and this character trait can be seen through their words and actions. Today we're going to read from fabled fourth graders Dance Stanford Dance, and we're going to think about what Stanford's positive character trait is throughout this fable. Dance Stanford Dance. Teachers called Stanford Bennett conscientious. This meant he did all his homework, studied for every test, kept the inside of his desk tidy, and always returned his library books on time. This also meant he annoyed his classmates. Why can't you act like a regular kid? Calvin asked during Friday free time. Stanford, who was alphabetizing next month's vocabulary words, snorted. <laughs> you mean waste my time like everyone else? He rolled his eyes. Get serious. I am serious, said Calvin. You should play more games. Have more fun. Why don't you laugh once in a while? Stanford snorted again. Playing games won't earn me an A in spelling. Having fun won't make me the best student in the class. Laughing won't get me into a top-notch college. Jeez, said Calvin. Who cares about stupid stuff like that? <laughs> I do, snapped Stanford. He went back to his alphabetizing. Calvin went back to his finger paints. Just then, Mr. Jupiter clapped his hands. Put away your things and line up at the door, please. It's time to rehearse for this year's fall musical. Oh, I hate the fall musical, Lenny grumbled as the children headed down the hall. I always end up wearing a squirrel costume. Leonard, corrected Mr. Jupiter, you know that isn't that I don't allow that word. There is no hating in my classroom. Lenny looked around. I'm not hating in the classroom, he said. I'm hating in the hallway. There is no hating in the hallway either, said Mr. Jupiter. The children walked into the auditorium. Can I hate in here? asked Lenny. Mr. Jupiter shook his head. I hate that, Lenny muttered under his breath. He followed the others onto the stage. Mrs. Playwright, the traveling drama teacher, was waiting for them. Until this year, every elementary school had always had its own drama teacher, but the district had run out of money. Now all 64 elementary schools shared Mrs. Playwright. She smiled. I'm so excited about this year's fall musical at Marcus Aurelius Elementary School. Marcus Aurelius, repeated Humphrey. The children looked at one another. You mean Aesop Elementary School, said Amisha. What, said Mrs. Playwright. This is Aesop School, said Bernadette. It is, said Mrs. Playwright. She flipped open her calendar. Let's see, Marcus Aurelius School on the 6th, Caesar School on the 16th, Ovid School on the 26th, Aesop School on the... She turned back to the children. I'm so excited about this year's fall musical at Aesop Elementary School. She handed out sheets of music. Now then, children, she said, this is the song you will be performing. Let's sing just the verse first so I know what you sound like. Ready? She tutored her pitch pipe and the children squawked. Up on the treetops I see leaves, they are swaying in the breeze. First they're green, but when it turns cold, they change to red and orange and gold. Gag, said Calvin. Gross, said Everly. Barf, said Mrs. Playwright. That was awful. This class is going to need lots of singing practice. Now let's see your dancing skills. Your routine goes like this, she demonstrated. Side together, clap. Side together, clap, shimmy, shuffle, hop, turn, kick, cha-cha-cha. Now you try, she said. The children hopped, shuffled, kicked. Oof! Amisha bumped into Ham. Rachel tripped over Melvin, and Bruce accidentally grabbed Bernadette's hand. Cooties! he cried. Get serious, snorted Stanford. It's a scientific fact that girls don't have cooties. Then you won't mind if I do this, said Bruce. He wiped his hand on Stanford's Theory of Relativity t-shirt. Disgusting! Disgusting, cried Stanford. I agree, said Miss Playwright. Your dancing skills are disgusting. This class is going to need lots of dancing practice, too. How long do we have to learn it all? Stanford asked. 
Just six weeks, answered Mrs. Playwright. That means all of you will need to get serious, said Stanford. Exactly, said Mrs. Playwright. She smiled at Stanford. The fourth graders at Cicero Elementary School are certainly conscientious. Cicero Elementary School, repeated Humphrey. You mean Aesop Elementary School, corrected Victoria. What? said Mrs. Playwright. This is Aesop School, said Lil. Oh, right, said Mrs. Playwright. She shook her head to clear it. The fourth graders here at Aesop Elementary are certainly conscientious. I try, said Stanford. I'm going to be sick, gagged Bruce. After that, Stanford practiced every chance he got. He practiced on the play playground, up on the treetops, in the lunch line. I see leaves, even the boys' bathroom. They are swaying in the breeze. His classmates watched with annoyance. Why bother? Bernadette asked one day. The fall musical is such a long way off. Get serious, said Stanford. The day of the show will be here before you know it. I'm learning my part, and I think you should, too. But no one listened to his advice. Three weeks before the musical, Stanford knew the entire song, all three verses by heart. The others knew nothing. Let's take it again from the top, cried Mrs. Playwright during rehearsal. She blew her pitch pipe and sang, Up on the treetops I see, fleas, sang Rose. A wet sneeze, sang Bruce. Limburger cheese, sang Ham. Get serious, said Stanford. Why, replied his classmates. We've got plenty of time. So they kept rhyming, but Stanford kept practicing. Two weeks before the musical, Stanford could do every kick, shimmy, and shuffle perfectly. The others could do nothing. Show me your cha-cha-cha, cried Mrs. Playwright during rehearsal. Bernadette did two leaps and an arabesque. Jackie spun around on her back. Bruce grabbed Calvin and tangoed him around the stage. Get serious, said Stanford. We will, replied his classmates. Later. So they all tangoed. But Stanford practiced. One week before the musical, Stanford could sing all three verses while kicking, shimmying, and shuffling all at the same time. As for the others, we'll start tomorrow, they said. You promise? begged Mrs. Playwright. Cross our hearts and, ho hearts and hope to cha-cha-cha, they replied. Stanford rolled his eyes. It's serious, he said, and kept practicing. When the night of the fall musical arrived, the auditorium was crammed full. Exhausted teachers, excited students, proud parents, bored brothers and sisters, crying babies, obligated school board members, aunts, uncles, grandparents, even a photographer from a local newspaper took up every seat. Mrs. Playwright stepped into the spotlight. Welcome to the Petronius Elementary School's Fall Musical. The audience looked at one another. You mean Aesop Elementary School, whispered Mrs. Struggles from the front row. What? asked Mrs. Playwright. Aesop School! Mrs. Buns bellowed from through the bullhorn she always kept at her side. Is it? Said, asked Mrs. Playwright. She flipped over in her calendar. Let's see. Petronius on the 4th, Plenty the Elder on the 14th, Horace on the 24th, Aesop School on the... She turned back to the audience. Welcome to Aesop Elementary School's Fall Musical! The audience clapped. Backstage, the fourth graders watched nervously as the first graders brought down the house with their song, I'm a Little Acorn. The second graders tickled the audience's funny bone with a humorous skit called Roly Poly Pumpkin. The third graders stopped the show with their interpretive dance, Make Applesauce. Then it was the fourth grader's turn. Break a leg, said Mr. Jupiter. That's a terrible thing to say, said Missy. No, it's an expression I learned while performing in Cats on Broadway, explained Mr. Jupiter. It's theater talk for good luck. Oh, in that case, thank you, said Missy. Oh, you're welcome, said Mr. Jupiter, and he hurried off to take his seat in the audience. You're on, whispered Mrs. Playwright. She began pushing the children from the wings. They stumbled on stage and into the spotlight. Uh, now what, whispered Lenny. He shoved the sagging hood of his squirrel costume out of his eyes just as the music started. Up on the treetops, the fourth graders began shakily. I see leaves, Stanford belted out. Bursting from the wings, he whirled across the stage, his oak leaf costume fluttering behind him, bumping past Lenny, oof, elbowing aside Emberly, ouch, tripping Victoria, hey! He sighed together, clapped, sighed together, clapped as he sang. 
Up on the treetops I see leaves, they are swaying in the breeze. First they are green, but when it turns cold, they change to red and orange and gold. His classmates tried to keep up, but it was no use. They kicked when they should have shimmied, they shuffled when they should have kicked, and no one knew when to cha-cha-cha. Finally, they came to a complete standstill as Stanford danced around them, then burst into the second burst. Go, 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 where did they go? Ho, 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 don't you know? The audience leaped to its feet as Stanford cha-cha-cha'd his way into the big finish. That's when the wind blows swish, 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 and they come floating down like this. As the rest of the class slunk off stage, the audience whistled, stomped their feet, and shouted, Encore! Encore! Mrs. Playwright asked Stanford to take a bow, and the newspaper photographer snapped his picture. Our readers want to know, he said, do you plan on becoming a singer and dancer when you grow up? Stanford snorted. Get serious. Then he hurried off stage to work on his book report about the haunted room by Hugo first. After all, it was due in just six weeks. The moral of the story is it is, it is wise to prepare today for the once of tomorrow. So if we think about the character Stanford in this fable, we can see that Stanford is the only fourth grader out of all the fourth graders who practiced for the play. And then that meant that he was the only fourth grader who was able to perform properly when it came time for the performance in front of an audience. So we know that Stanford has a positive character trait. And in this case, his positive character trait is that he's a hard worker and that he always makes sure that he practices before the big game. And in this case, Stanford practiced before the play came along and then he was able to triumph. So we can see that he didn't have a conflict, but he had a triumph because he was able to do the best that he could in front of the audience when the time came, unlike his other classmates who did not practice.